a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me what my father had in store for every day. And though I tread a darksome path, you sunshine all the way. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I'm so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. I am so glad that my Father in heaven tells of His love in the book He has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the greatest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Sat alone beside the highway begging His eyes were blind, the light he could not see He clutched his rags as he shivered in the shadows Then Jesus came and bade his darkness flee when Jesus comes, the tender's power is broken. When Jesus comes, all tears are wiped away. He takes the gloom and fills the life with glory. For all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. So men today have found the Savior able. They could not conquer passion, lust, and sin. Their broken hearts had left them sad and lonely. Then Jesus came and dwelt himself within. When Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, all tears are wiped away. He takes the gloom and fills the life with glory. For all is changed when Jesus Jesus comes to stay. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus. the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us again. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on
Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, mine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, mine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be from above Hallelujah I'm the glory Hallelujah Amen Hallelujah I'm the glory Revive us again My friend came to the door, she said, well, I was on the phone cooking me and my baby some breakfast. And she said, hey, something wrong, it's popping. I said, what? She said, yeah. I said, no. Nah. So the girl come downstairs, she come out her apartment with her baby with no shoes on. I said, oh, girl, it's cold outside. She said, something ain't right. I said, oh, man. She said, oh, man, the building is on fire. I said, no, what? I got my three kids and we bounced out. Uh-uh, we ain't gonna be in no fire, not today. <laughs> if we open it up, it's gonna ooze, and if we open it up, it's gonna leak, and if we open it up, it's gonna smell, and we open it up, it's gonna hurt, but if we don't open it up, if we don't open it up, it won't get better. It won't get better. It'll just stay bitter. And if it stays bitter, it won't get better. It'll stay bitter. It'll stay bitter and resentful and angry because nobody told you it was going to be like this. And I don't even want to open this up in public because I know how deep it is. But the Lord, while the anointing is passing by, there's too much anointing in this room. To oh, oh, too much. Too much. Oh, <laughs> too much to everybody else and leave you sitting over there festering and festering and festering and like a big old spiritual zit festering especially you said it in a joking way but especially when the spirit of suicide hangs around your house trying to get you back ow 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 I call it He done did it. He called it out, man. It's over. Look at that lady fanning him. She's like, woo, we need some fanning. <laughs> You don't get to run, you don't get to hide, you don't get to quit, you don't get to faint. 
you don't get to do any of that because it's not a stage that you prayed for it's not a building that you prayed for it's not an opportunity that you prayed for you've always wanted God to make a man out of you and he's using the stage to make a man out of you he's using the building to make a man out of you he's using the opportunity to make a man out of you standing back up on his feet put him back up on his Get feet back up. you're gifted you're anointed you've always been gifted because you've been broken you've always been gifted because you've been broken you've always been gifted because you've been broken and you know how to flow and you, you know, know how, how to, to bless flow. everybody and everybody got your gift but nobody got you nobody got, got you no nobody flow. got you they got your gift but they never got you they never got you they never got you they never got you and god is touching you he's using it to touch you he's gonna make a man old td man he always comes in he always comes in and restores them devils man Every time them guys, those devils, old TD always comes in and restores them. Always. Because they never got you. That's why. They never got you. That's what I'm talking about. This is like second to my favorite video. I got to show you, like, like. The one that's even better is this one, I think. Oh, what's that guy's name? Oh, man. What's that guy's name? Man. Tyler Perry. Oh, this one. I. This is the one where, I mean... This is it right here, man. Would, would you come tell what the Lord told you? Uh, right here. Uh, God bless you. It's called me a little off guard, Bishop. A, a, a couple of, uh, what was it, three or four days ago? Three or four days ago, I, I called. I was at Manpower, and uh, being blessed, wrote my check out. I said, you know, I, I didn't have my checkbook when I got to Pastor White's. Uh, when I got to a, a woman that I lose the night before, and Pastor White said, you know, write a check for $113,000, for those of you who can. Write a, write a check for $113 for Psalms 113. And I wrote a check for $113,000. And I admit... <clears throat> My intention was to just leave the check and bless God. Because, see, I love to give. I've been a giver all my life. And I, got, and I got to tell you about how much I gave to that guy. You know, I met guys like this. They do that. They'll give to a ministry. Then they tell everybody everything they gave. Some of them make videos about it. And that's something like this. Oh, you mean like they almost might have the same spirit as this guy? You mean they might actually have like... The same charismatic spirit as, like, this guy? That they'd make a video about what they gave? Nah. nah. That could never happen. That only happens on TV. On T.D. Jake's TV, right? And when people have given to you and sown into you and God has touched them and given, given you favor. Because, see, when you have favor with... Come on, somebody. Remember, he's an actor and paid very well to act. Just think about that. Was paid very well to get into drag. They don't understand it where I come from. They don't understand it in Hollywood. But I'm going to tell you something about the blood of Jesus. All of my life, you know, my mother... She didn't have much to give me. She didn't have millions of dollars. She didn't have some legacy, but she had Jesus. And she taught me about that God. So I didn't even know that he was, he was trying to build this youth center. I didn't even know it, but I know how important the youth are. So we were sitting in the service, and I leaned up toward him, and I said, I've just been touched to give a million dollars. So as... 
<laughs> Look at that lady start dancing. Woohoo! You kidding me? Just touch. You give a million dollars. So when you got up here and you said a million dollars, I said, God, I don't know what you're doing, but I know I heard your voice. Hey! <laughs> Sounds like some indigestion, something bad going on there. He got ingested with some devils, right? I'm going to tell you right now, when you hear the voice of God, you move. Don't worry about what nobody says to you. Don't worry about what it looks like. Don't worry about your enemy. Don't worry about your hater. He will bless you. He will lift you. He will give. Sometimes you spend too much time worried about your haters. You spend too much time worried about people talking about you. But what you need to understand is that the Bible says in order for you to be blessed, your haters have to be present. How do I know that? The book of Psalms says he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. So in order for me to eat, they have to be present. So God bless you, Bishop. I pray right now that you will continue to do everything you're doing. I pray his anointing will stay upon you. I pray the power of God all over you. I pray his favor. I pray the blood of Jesus will come upon you right now. Keep you in his hair. God, I thank you for your blessings. Oh, here comes the loudmouth Jesse. Oh, here comes the loudmouth screeching Jesse, man. Come on, somebody give God some praise. He's pushing that baby out. Whoa. He's pushing that baby out. Come on, he's pushing that baby out. Help him with his labor, somebody. That guy needs a spiritual epidural. Somebody holler, push! Push! Now come on and praise him! Come on, he just got a million dollars. Somebody get happy. Oh, that voice. Our memorization verses for this week for Baptist history and for our children this week and myself, by the way, which I have to finish. I, I think I got them. I think I got them. But here they are. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they, with feigned words, make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Well, good morning, everyone. What a way to open up, huh? We'll get to some more of these crazy, psychotic, charismatic nut jobs.
Okay? We'll get to some more of those so I can spend some time making all my enemies mad, preaching against Charismania, and having them try to shut my channel down all the time. I don't know, some psychopaths in Texas. Amen. Okay. So then. You see who's on here. Elijah Morgan. Pilgrim lady. Carrie, Jesus is Lord. Mary Teresa and Teresa Darrell's wife. Carl Winters. Mary Teresa. I already said that. Carrie Acker. Joe McDonald. Truth Seeker. Chain Break. Brandon Swanson. Brandon Swanson. Katie Porter. Been a long time since I've seen you on here. Jen Stewart. John Hippie, America Montes Sedosia. Hmm. Andrea. All right, here we go. The Matt Teos. Kelly. Adam, my brother-in-law. From Parts Unknown. Danielle. Doyce Volt. Barry. A Martyr's Confession. Okay. All right, Barry, we get the point. We know there's a Kabbalistic Jewish group of people, but I also know that the Pope is in charge of all of them, and I can prove that and have proved that. And we'll continue to prove that, but anyway... That doesn't take away from the fact that there's a Jewish cabal out there, and yes, they're Antichrist. The Bible very clearly says that. Pope Francis is not working for the Jews. I don't know how in the world anybody can get that so confused. When the Bible says that this is the time of the Gentiles. That this right here is the time of the Gentiles. For sure. Anyway. It also tells you how you're supposed to love those people and give them the truth right it's so easy to see once you understand the bible but if you're just looking for outside sources then you don't see the true conspiracy but anyway, I'm not going to get into that today.
All right, so. Got everybody on here today. Ross Duncan. Victoria. Rachel. Yeah, that 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 whole age old argument. I mean, it never really was an argument because most people knew and realized exactly what it was. But the problem is, is that a lot of people. You know. So anyway, that's just the way it goes. All right, Barry, we'll see you around. Take care. You're sure welcome to listen, but I don't want to get into to all the I hate Jews stuff. It's just annoying. Super annoying, and it's a weird spirit. And once they get that spirit, it's just like it doesn't go away. They they double down on that, and they have this strange, weird, like... They, they end up getting this strange spirit about them um it's kind of a spirit like haman it's kind of a spirit like haman hey uh haman And it's really kind of weird. I I don't like that. Let me see something here. Okay, maybe I will get into it a little bit. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost that I have a great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises? Whose are the fathers and whom of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever, amen. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. So we understand he's talking about spiritually versus physical Israel. For this is the word promise, okay? Now, um, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid, for he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Okay, let's see. Maybe it is 10 I'm looking for here. He said, Brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Well, he's not talking about the church. He's talking about Israel. All right? Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. 
For Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to every one that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth these things shall live by them. Okay. <clears throat> for the scriptures saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all them that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. All right. All right. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words into the ends of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation will I anger you. But Isaiah is very bold, and saith, I was found of them that sought me not... I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me, but to Israel he saith, All the day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and a gainsaying people. I say then, Hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I am also an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye, ye know not what the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if it's by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more of grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more of grace. No more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh, but for the election hath obtained it, but the election hath attained it, and the rest were blinded. According it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. This was the purpose. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminish of them, diminishing of them be the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles, as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke emulation to them which are my flesh, and I might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if, if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree wert grafted in among them, and with them thou partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast so here's the spirit you're supposed to have. See this? This is how you're supposed to uh, treat unbelieving Jews. You can tell the truth about them that they're antichrist. I got no problem with that. But it's this weird, hateful spirit. By the way, it's also misdirected because they're not in charge of anything. Some are in billionaire and millionaire positions. But they do not overall run the entire system. That's save for Pontifex Maximus. Boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Graft in. Well, because of unbelief they are broken off and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell. Severity. But toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. And they also, if they abide still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut off of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, were grafted contrary to the nature of the good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted in their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. 
lest you should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Hasn't happened yet. Still there. Still in the time of the Gentiles. Fullness haven't happened yet. That blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant to them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. Look. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the father's sake. That's right, Brother Paul. They are enemies, but we are commanded to love them, and that's tell them the truth, and tell the truth about them. I have no problem telling the truth. I have no problem telling the truth about uh, Jews and high-level Jews in certain places and positions. Absolutely not, and I think we ought to. So, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so have these also now not believed that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. So you've got to preach the gospel to them so they can be saved. Otherwise, how in the world are they ever going to be saved? Even so, have these also now not believed that through your mercy they may obtain they also may obtain mercy for god hath concluded them all in unbelief that he might have mercy upon all oh the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of god how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out for who hath known the mind of the Lord, who hath been his counselor, who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed in him again. For of him, and through him, and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever. Amen. That's it right there. And by the way, when they said they have no king but Caesar, and their house was left unto them destitute, desolate, they're... They had no power any longer. They're put in places of power. And they're made wealthy and they're given things and all those things are true. And all those things happen. And I'm not discounting any of that. But it is made, they are made, they are made to be the target of hate and animosity for a reason. Chain break, everyone goes to hell without knowing the gospel of Jesus Christ. When you take your doctrine of salvation uh, and you look at it entirely, you have to look at the entire book of Romans as Paul is teaching the doctrines of salvation. He is teaching 
uh, about Jew, about Gentile, about the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is teaching about all of them. And he is explaining in Romans chapter 1. He is explaining in Romans chapter 1 those that they're without the law are sinners. Romans chapter 2, he explains that all are sinners, are the Jews, could not be saved by the law. Romans chapter 3, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All the way down, he shows the teaching. Paul tells you here in Romans chapter 9 through 12 that I just read to you that there's only one gospel and there's only one way to be saved. It was God's mercy to the Gentiles that the Jews rejected the gospel and their Messiah that the world might be saved. So everyone is saved the exact same way with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every man has mercy showed unto him until the day of his death. Every man has an opportunity to repent and believe the gospel. Romans 1 speaks of creation bearing witness of the God of the Bible. Romans 2, that the law bears witness to the God of the Bible. Right? One died outside of the law, one died inside of the law. Romans 3, you're all guilty. Right? See, what advantage then hath the Jew? Jews have a lot of advantage. They're given the Old Testament. But the Bible says that blindness in part has been given to them judicially. That doesn't mean individually they can't be saved. It means as a nation. Why? Because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They rejected the God of the Bible. So you have to understand what the Bible is speaking of there. It's telling you the right way to deal with the Jews. And yes, expose their wrong. I've, I, I'm not against that. Expose the Kabbalistic teachings. Expose the Kabbalah. Expose the, 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 the New World Order. Um, all that stuff. Expose all of them. But also understand the structure that's actually there. Because most people are ignorant to the actual structure that's there. That the Roman government in the time of the apostles was ruling the known world. And apostasy was rising at the time. And the Jews said that they had no king but Caesar. And they bowed to the scepter of Rome against their king. And they'll have no relief until the King of Kings comes back again and steps down on the Mount of Olives. All right. Anyway, I don't know how we got on that, but we got on it. Oh, yeah, I do know how we got on that. I'm... I do know that guy, whatever his name was. Anyway. All right. Are you ready? You ready for the charismatics, the false teachers also among you? Look at this. Paula White, President Trump's pastor. Pastor Paula. A.K.A. Hoochie Mama. Or Big Ho, whatever you want to call her.
The new apostolic reformation, Queen Paula White, demonstrated a further lack of biblical discernment and an increasing glut of demonic hand-holding when she got up on stage and gave a keynote address at the World Christian Leadership Conference. The conference was founded by Dr. Hak Ja Han Moon, who is the Reverend Doctor, the widow of the Reverend Doctor Sun Young Moon. Sun Myung Moon, co-founder of the Universal Peace Federation, the World Unification Church. She's a billionaire and regarded by many as the Messiah and the true parent to all mankind, whose goal is to unite all faiths in world peace and harmony. They're Moonies. Her husband founded the Mooney cult. So, you got Reverend Paula White. And the keynote speaker, Antichrist, Jezebel, Dr. Hak Jahan Moon, the mother of peace. See, that is that Jezebel, queen of heaven. And let's see what Paula says about this false prophet. I am so honored to be with you. And what an encouragement to the body of Christ and to you, Mother Moon. For your tireless efforts. To you, Mother Moon. Hey, Dos Volt. I'm not going to turn to anything. I'm doing something right now. So, I'm sorry, but that's over now. And I'm moving forward on teaching what I'm teaching. and your work as you have continued to bring faith leaders from all over the world to work together in peace and unification to bring together people for the better cause i congratulate well, what is the better cause what exactly is the better cause these people have a perverse spirit about them They teach something and a different Christ and another gospel, right? Mm -hmm. And while we see there is much work still to be done, we look at the great accomplishments that you have set as an example for all of us to follow. I'm reminded of the word of God. The Bible tells us so clearly in 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, that God is love. And whoever abides in love abides in God. You know, it's interesting. Can I show you something that I think is really funny? She's quoting from 1 John 4. Let's go to 1 John 4. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out of the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. 
year of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. She skipped the first part of the entire chapter that deals with the Antichrist spirit. That's how deceptive these people are. That's how absolutely wicked these people are. Do you understand that? That's how wicked they are. She skips the first part of the verse of the chapter that deals with that Antichrist spirit, which is exactly, which is exactly what um, the Moonies there are dealing with. What in the world happened here? Let me see. Let me get back to where I was at here. There it is. Let's back up a little bit here. Look, I'm reminded of the Word of God. The Bible tells us so clearly. And so 1 John 4, 16. She starts way down here about love. Right? She skips all the verses on the Antichrist, warning them, right? Warning them. Somebody asked the question, uh, hey, pastor, my sister is a children's pastor. Well, there's no such thing, but is she violating God's word? She doesn't usurp authority over men, but she teaches children. Nothing wrong with teaching children at all. But I wouldn't call her a children's pastor. But she might have the gift of teaching, and she may teach children. And we don't agree with having separate children's classes in our church. But I wouldn't, pers I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't go against, uh, or I wouldn't come down hard on her for teaching children. I just don't think there's any such thing. I would stay away from from any connotation of of that pastor of being a pastor as a uh, as a woman but notice this that here's before he gets into love i want you to remember this before john gets into explaining the love of god here what he does do is speak of that spirit of Antichrist. And the Moonies deny Christ, the Christ of the Bible. They deny him. That's what they do. And she goes there and acts like they're all in agreement together. And they're not. Well, they are. But biblical Christianity is not. By the way, I got this nice Bible here. Brother Carl and Brother Peter got me a nice Bible here. A nice leather... And it smells really good, by the way. Man, does it smell good. I wish I wish I had a cologne called leather, and it smelled like fresh leather from a fresh Bible. Because, man, it smells good. Right? Oh, I love the way a brand new leather Bible smells, man. Oh. It just smells really good. Anyway, so, and Mary. Carl, Mary, and 
Peter, thank you so much. What a blessing. They wanted to get me something. They didn't want to support Joel Olstein's uh, cube, which if you could find one used, then you technically wouldn't be supporting him directly because somebody would have already paid for it. So I'm just I'm just throwing that out there. But I do enjoy, and it's so soft. It's called Leather Soft. Man, is it ever. Anyway, so I am just blessed and grateful for that. Thank you so much. And uh, all right. The Bible warns us before it talks about love. It warns us about these apostates. These false prophets. Okay? So it it warns us about them. Paula White... Paula White, the president's pastor. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, that God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. It's so important that we as clergy, as people of faith, call the body of Christ together to abide which means to stand firm in God's love, to extend peace, to extend his love, to see his love cover our nation and all nations, to bring them to him, a true knowledge of who he is, a true knowledge of walking in that love. For it goes on in the book of James and all throughout 1 John and says that there cannot be bitter and sweet waters that flow out of the same fountain that you cannot say that you love God and yet you hate your brother. And so it tells us to labor, to work diligently, to work with effort for the unity of all brethren. So here they come under this false unity. They come under this false unity. And they teach in this in this false unity that that All the body of Christ is to come together. Now, I don't agree with their definition of the body of Christ, but other than that. But anyway, um, she has a mystical body that she's preaching, a mystical body that comes together. Okay? And she believes that that body... And, um, well, let me stop there for a second and and address Kevin because I suppose I should. Uh, Kevin said, I never saw the fruit of the Spirit as being a jerk. As much as you quote John, and as hard uh, as things as he had to say, do you think he was a jerk? And then he ends it with Beloved. Well, let, Kevin, let me address you with that. Let me ask you if it was pleasant for Peter or for Jesus to tell those disciples, go tell Herod that fox or John the Baptist when he looked at the, at the Pharisees and he said to them, and he said to them, "Ye generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Or let me ask you, when Peter is comparing the false prophets to those of Sodom and Gomorrah, to putrid Sodomites, 
to fallen angels, to those that are that are reserved in everlasting chains of fire. If that was pleasant to them. Or when Elijah called uh, Elijah mocked the prophets of Baal. And they were cutting themselves. I wonder if that was pleasant. What you call a jerk? I call just speaking like a man and straightforward. Now it could be, it could be that you are used to soft-spoken men. It could be that you yourself are a soft-spoken man. That's neither here nor there. As far as that goes. Maybe you're not that bold of a man. And maybe you have a quiet delivery. But I will just I will just say this to you, Kevin. I I would just say this to you, Kevin. You're there for a reason where you're at, and I'm here for a reason where I'm at. And you keep saying John isn't a jerk. So you're in, you're you're basically insinuating that I'm a jerk. So why don't you square your little virtual shoulders, look me square in the eye through this system right here, and tell me I think you're just a jerk. And then take your little self on your happy little horse and ride on out of here. That's what you can do. And guess what? Kevin, nobody's forcing you to listen. You can go off and you can rebuke false prophets the way God leads you to rebuke them. But you could stop wasting everybody's time here with your John Piper approach because nobody wants to hear it. If they were interested in hearing it, then they would all be streaming online with you and listening to you. But they're not doing that. They're here to listen to the instruction that I'm giving right now. Seems pretty simple. Seems pretty simple, Kevin. But you'll make me do what I have to do with everybody else. You'll do your little manipulative, I'm a little puppy dog. I'm a little nice, nice guy. Lick little, little doggy, licking little hands and kissing little puppies until I, and you'll manipulate people like that till I have to just cut you off because you got that spirit about you. And guys like you always come on when I deal with the Jezebel spiritual sluts. You guys with your effeminate spirit always have to interfere with me talking about these little Jezebels. You always have to do it. There's just something about it that effeminate guys have to jump on here and tell me to be nice to Jezebels. Well... All right, Kevin. Let's look at something real quick. Because I think this was said the most pleasant way possible by the Apostle John. When he's repeating and he's writing down what Christ said. Right? Here it is. Are you ready? Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest. That woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and seduce and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And in the most sweetest and kindest and softest and gentlest and cushy, wishy, teddy, berry, wary way, 
he said this. And I give her space to repent of her fornication. And she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed. And them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Now that sounded real squishy-wishy, softy-wafty, smoothy-woothy, jolly osteeny weeny Didn't it, Kevin? Didn't it, Kevin? See? You see? But you know why I address it, guys? Because it's really there. And it's such a prevalent spirit today that they hate the truth. And they have to come on and defend this. Who, if there was a picture of Jezebel... There it is. In a dictionary, there it is. Do you see it? It's not what you think. It's that. That. And what do the charismatic people always do? Attack me or the effeminate men attack me when I preach against that. How many times does that happen? You that have listened for years to this broadcast, how many times does that happen? Okay. Great teachable moment, though. Great teachable moment. Here we go. I ask you, as fellow clergy, as people of faith. What faith? What faith? The faith once delivered unto the saints? That faith or any faith? Just faith. That we labor, it's so important, to be rightfully equipped with the armor that God has given us through his word. His word is our bedrock. And so as we turn to his holy scriptures, the bedrock of our faith, we're able to find comfort and consolation. You see, the Bible is pretty clear. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, God is having a talk with Solomon right prior. This is like, this is like so scripted, it's sick. Like the whole thing is like choreographed. The whole thing is so absolutely choreographed. And he says, after he'd built the temple, he said to him, look, there will be a time where there is no rain, where there will be a plague among the land. Let me ask you a question. She's using Solomon as a figure, right? God told Solomon not to worship any other gods. Solomon reared up gods for his pagan wives. How absolutely timely is it? That she swerves and does every Antichrist thing possible. But if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. As we truly repent and ask God to search our hearts. Is there anything that is not pleasing to you, God? Is there anything that you need to do in our life? As we repent and we pray and we fast, we know that God will heal our land. 
God wants to bring restoration. So I pray that you, myself, along along with Mother Moon, Mother Moon, along with Mother Moon, will be a part of that great restoration. Jesus said it like this in Matthew chapter 12, verse 30. He said, whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather scatters. We thank you for that spirit of gathering on you, Mother Moon. May the We think of that spirit, we thank God for that spirit of gathering, Mother Moon. Do you, do you understand what's going on here? The spirit of gather come upon you right now. And may God do a great work to gather us together. We are praying for America and also for the reunification of Korea. I'm reminded of this story that I'd like to read to you in Mother Moon's memoir. On page 355, it tells and says this. Mother Moon tells about a photograph of her grandmother, Miss Jo, with a child on her back, a super devout Christian, who bravely went out in the 1919 Korean independence movement to protest the brutal domination of Japan at an appointed hour, pulled their banished Korean flags from their blouses and defiantly waved them, all with women, all over Korea in public. Mother Moon. So like pushing feminism. Do you catch this? Pushing feminism. You see what spirit they have? Do you see the, the, the spirit that's attached to this? Right? There's a spirit. Yeah. There's a spirit of gathering. What spirit is it? Babylon. Right? It's the spirit of Bab at Babylon. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen. Man, I can't wait for that. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. This is that spirit. Then you got that spirit of fem feminism that is there as well. Notes that the child on her back was her mother and she noted the sad expression on her grandmother's face when the nation was stolen. Then in another picture, her mother, Miss Hong, was carrying a child on her back and joyously waving her Korean flag on August the 15th of 1945 when Japan surrendered. Her grandmother had such a look of joy because she regained her nation. The child was Mother Moon. Mother Moon, we see the day coming when you will have the same joy on your face because together with you, America and Christianity will support Korea coming back together as one nation for God, bringing the world to peace. May God do a work in America. May God do a work in Korea. And may God do a work through all of his chosen anointed children. God bless you. Wow. So, so she's pronouncing a blessing on total apostates, right? Total people that are apostates in what they believe, right?
Look at this. If there come any, wait, let me back up. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver, an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. For he that biddeth him God's speed is a partaker of his evil deeds. That's the warning. That's a warning from God. Neither bid him God's speed. All right, let's play a song real quick. That's what we'll do. And then after we play that song, then we'll... Um, I like this one. This is one of my favorite ones. I like I like the way this song's. But uh, then we will uh, get to the next heretic, which I want to talk to you about Joel Osteen a little bit. Let's see. Hang on a second.
All right. Brandon Swanson traveling to Minnesota. All right, we'll be praying for you, Brandon, about that as you travel to Minnesota here. Now, let's see. Let me see some comments here real quick before I get back started. Oh, yeah, I do too, yeah. All right. Let's see here. All right, guys. We are, let me see if I can find what I was looking for. That's the wrong one. Let me see, I think it's on this one. Right here. I think it's unbelievable and it just shows the absolute hypocrisy. Let's see. Look at this. So you got Rome getting all their money, right? Now look at this. You got Joel Osteen's Lakeland Church received $4.4 million in federal PPP loans that they do not have to pay back. Joel Olstein's Texas-based megachurch received a huge stimulus money after taking a huge chunk of, of stimulus money after taking advantage of the CARES Act Paycheck Protection Program, receiving 44 $4.4 million to help offset their several months of virtual services. The program which the federal government passed in response to the pandemic earlier this year in a big way is a forgivable loan that companies did, don't have to pay back so long as it was spent on wages and other related expenses. When reached out for comment, they would, as why they would even apply for it, church spokesman said that, that given the church shut down in-person services for over seven months, that closure negatively impacted their ability to garner ties, offerings, and other substantial donations. So what they're saying is uh, they had to have that money. Believing the shutdown only last a few weeks, Lakewood did not initially apply for PPP assistance during the first half of the program. However, as the shutdown persisted month after month, given the economic uncertainty, Lakewood finally applied for the PPP loan and has been able to provide full salaries and benefits, including health insurance coverage to all its employees and their families. The church has an annual budget of over $90 million. Wow. The revelation of receiving such a large as has many small business owners crying foul as thousands of Texas business owners were denied claims while Osteen got one of the largest in the state. In particular, critics are making the following arguments, which appear sound in our estimation. Number one, the entire time the church was shut down for in-person services, they were still holding online services and were fundraising and receiving money. The decision to shut down their church for in-person services for seven months was a decision that the church made. It was not mandated in any way. They would have opened up way sooner, but chose not to. Osteen in a multi-million dollar is a multi-millionaire worth a net worth between 60 and 100 million. He lives in a 17,000 square foot mansion that is worth 11.5 million. So think about this. So these guys get all this money handed to them from the government. I know most of the churches took it. Most of them did. Independent Baptist ones, most of them did. Most of them that were 501c3, that could pay for their pastor's salary, the salary of their Christian schools, the salary of all of their groups. 
right? So they got they got four point four million dollars. Now our text verse right about these apostle uh, apostates. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of of whom the way of truth is evil spoken of. And through covetousness, covetousness, Shall they with feign words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not? That's these people. That's who they are. They're all about money. They're all about advantage. They're all about prestige now I think there was I'm sure there was good churches that preached the gospel that took this money I'm sure there there was and I'm sure they preached the gospel and I'm sure they believe in Christian holiness and separation and all those things. I'm sure. Right? Check this out. More more good Christian people here, right? Billionaire Kanye West, Yeezy. Received a multi-million dollar PPP loan. On the heels of his announcement that he's running for president, documents reveal that billionaire Kanye West fashion company, Yeezy, received more than $2 million through the Paycheck Protection Program. He owns 100% of his company. Now... He's a private company. I know he's not a church. Okay, so I get it. I get it. But here are these people that know full well they don't need that money. Now, I get why businesses, private businesses took it. I get Kanye is not a church. Right? But... All these people just make it a fortune. And these charismatics make it a fortune. And then you have people like this guy right here, this governor of Virginia, right? He tells Christians, stay home. You don't need to sit in pews for God to hear your prayers. Because you only go to church to pray, you losers. Right? Virginia Democrat governor who is famous for wearing blackface and a racist stunt previously is now telling Christians how to worship by staying home. In a coronavirus briefing today, Governor Ralph Nordham enlightened the faithful by telling them that online worship is still worship, and you don't need to sit in the pews for God to hear your prayers. I got to hear this. Fast. I actually just had it happen the other day when Not I was bad. walking into Starbucks. Some guy came up and goes, how do you have such a good body? And instead of sitting there for... Th- that's like, real- like to- By the way, that's really gay. 
if some guy walked up to a Starbucks and said that to you, I would be like, whoa, that dude might be a Fruit Loop. I take a moment to talk about our faith communities. This is a holy time for multiple faith traditions. Tonight, as a matter of fact, is the first night of Hanukkah. Christmas is two weeks away. The holidays are typically times of joy and community. We gather together, we celebrate our faith, and we celebrate with family. But this year, we need to think about what is truly the most important thing. So worshiping God is not the most important thing. Okay? So understand that. Worshiping God is not the most important thing. He just told you that, okay? Is it the worship or the building? For me, God is wherever you are. You don't have to sit in the church pew for God to hear your prayers. So I strongly call... So this guy is totally 100% ignorant, okay? This guy is 100% ignorant of the purpose of church anyway. Ephesians chapter 4 tells us the purpose of the church, right? He's totally ignorant. As if we think there's something, well, some people might, as if they, th as if, if Christians think there's something magical about being in a building. We meet in a barn sometimes, okay? We meet in a field. But there is such a thing as a local New Testament church, an organized body of local believers that are sold out, sanctified, baptized. There are offices in that church. There are there's an organization in that church, and there's a purpose for that church. And it's not some universal, invisible thing. There's accountability. There's discipline. I didn't say, hey, Deuce, I didn't say the church was a physical building. I said it's an assembly of called out believers. That are baptized. There are offices to that church. There are requirements to that office. There's an order to that church. There's discipline to that body. What we're doing today is not church. OPBC Online is a ministry of Old Pass Baptist Church. And there are so many people out there that want to do away with the local New Testament church. They want to do away with it. And by the way, this guy feeds into the spirit of that. This whole government shutdown, it's about separating people from people. That's the goal. I realize, Deuce, that you believe in an invisible, universal, invisible church. And we're all the church and you wave your hands in the air. And you think the church is in the mountain and the church is in the valley and the church is in this and the church is in that. The church is wherever it assembles.
I know what the Bible says about the church very plainly, very clearly. All on our faith leaders to lead the way and set an example for their members. Worship with a mask on is still worship. Worship outside or worship online is still worship. So this guy, is, so I'm going to listen to the state that defines to me this stinking, rotten, wicked little pervert. Right? Is going to tell me that he's going to define what worship is. And he's going to define what the church does. And he's going to define what a church is. And he's going to define all those things. Well, I don't take my definition from what he says. I take my definition from the Word of God on what a church is. And the structure and order of that body. So here's this guy, this governor, and he's going to tell you, hey, look, you dummies. You can you can serve God somewhere like you're a bunch of idiots, like everybody. We're just all stupid people. That's what they do. They want you they 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 want to they want to exalt themselves over you and act like you need their definition. I really don't care. I really don't care what the governors of any state or the president or anybody else how they define what a church is. I don't care. I didn't sign up for their 501c3. I didn't sign up for their tax-exempt status. I didn't ask them for anything. Right? Our definition of a church doesn't come from the governor or what we can do. Oh, you could do this with your worship. Who do you think you are even talking about it, to be honest with you? Like, who do you think you are? It's like this guy, like, who does he think he is anyway? Like any of us need him to tip his hat to us? Like we need validation from a governor? Unbelievable. Just the, the absolute audacity these people have. But you'll find that most churches... Most churches Most churches are willing to listen. Most churches are willing to follow. Here we go. Museum of the Bible promotes pro-abortion, pro-sodomy pop star. The well-known Museum of the Bible, which may soon need to be renamed Museum of Idolatry, recently promoted one of the most notorious pro-sodomy, pro-abortion pop stars in the nation, Taylor Swift. On Facebook, the museum asked the rhetorical question, do you think there's a Bible reference in her song, Look What You Made Me Do? So... 
What do you suppose that has to do with the Museum of the Bible? What does that have to do with the Museum of the Bible? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing, but it's apostasy. They're trying to make Jesus cool to people. Oh, let's see. Where's the other one at I saw? Here's another one. Jory Micah says, you can't love gays unless you let them die in their sins. See this? Now, that's J.D. Hall or Reformation Her uh, Charlotte's take on it. What she really said is, you cannot love LGBTQ people without affirming them. Oh. In other words, if I call them to repentance... Honest, and I agree with that. Honestly, it's your unaffirming theology or LGBTQ people. You can't have both. Agreed. Agreed. I am unaffirming. See that? I agree with that statement. That part of the statement I agree with. Bunch of man-hating feminists is what she is. She's one of them. Jory Micah, who apparently started preaching when she was 13, once said that if God were a man, we can count her out. She also says she's a socialist because she's been studying the New Testament her entire life. Okay, so what is she really? She's a witch. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you. She's a witch. That's what you have to understand. Growing up in white evangel evangelicalism, I was always taught that astrology was new age at best, demonic at worst. But when we celebrated the astrologers who came to visit baby Jesus, what's the difference? Do, do you see? Do you see? I told you she's a witch. She's a witch. Here's another one. Here's another one. Are you ready? All I know is that Jesus hung out with sex workers and condemned religious hypocrites. You see that? Wait, Jesus looked at that woman and said... Go and sin no more. You see? Look who she supports. Elon Omar. See? Do 
Do you, do you understand this is who these people are? Keith Oberman? So you got to understand something that that girl's a witch. That's what she is. She's a witch. And that's what they do. Witches aren't what you think they are. They're people like that. They're people that twist and pervert the words of Christ. That's exactly who witches are. When people tell you to do the exact opposite of what the Bible says for you to do, but they act like they're following the Bible. They're witches. Plain and simple. All right, everybody, listen. I don't know if anybody wants to say anything, has any Bible questions. Maybe you have some questions, something like that. I'll give you a chance. Maybe you just want to say hi if you haven't said hi. Um, or you've been listening for a while or any of that kind of stuff or comments or questions or anything like that, I'll give you a chance here. We'll play a song here, and uh, we'll give you a chance to say hi. When the task is so long, fix your eyes on Jesus. You will sing a new song through his mighty power. When the way gets tough, when the sea gets rough, come on, keep on, sail on. When you're tempted, sail on, don't keep on pushing. gets rough, sail on, when you're tempted to quit, sail on, don't give up the ship, sail on, trust in God's might, don't give up the fight, come on, keep on, sail on, if you want to succeed, sail on, Christ is all you need, sail on, sail on. Good. Let's see. Kelly. Yeah, I I actually like um I actually like the songs better by by him as well than uh, by Then by Patch the Pirate as well, because a lot of his songs are, I don't know, kind of goofy. But anyway, that's true. Let's see. Oh, good. I'm glad you listened to that sermon, Don't Quit. That's good. I'm glad. 
Good. What's the name of that hymn Carl's Winters like Carl Winters likes? Uh he likes Beulah Land. Let's see if I can find it here. Oh no, you mean this one. This is Carl's favorite song right here. Oh, I'm so happy in the Lord as since he saved my soul. I'll shout it from the mountain top. Christ Jesus made me whole. Oh, I do need a special hat for that, I think. I think I do. That's right. Oh, that's, let's see. That was the Yodel song right there. Let me see. Let me see something here. Let's see. Let me look for something else here real quick. Oh, I wonder if that's a different one. This one might be a different one. Let me see. Hold 
pretty amazing that's called the yodel trio right there that's pretty amazing isn't it that's something anyway all right well here we go so uh let's see cindy i'm glad you listened to that uh don't quit sermon um that's good And uh, glad that it was a blessing to you for sure. And a few of you others that listened to it, good. I want to be an encouragement to people out there. I kept that title really simple. And I just want somebody to look at it sometime in the future. And they may be scrolling through and I don't know what they're doing with their life or what's going on or at their rope set, at the at the end of the rope and they're, they're at the end of, uh, of it all and they just, they're down and out and they just see that. And they just click on it and listen to it. And hopefully it'll help them. But um, hopefully it'll encourage them to continue on and to keep going and and, uh, fight the good fight of faith. Amen. Because no matter where we're at in, in this Christian life, older, younger, whatever the case may be, you know, we... We got to finish our course. We got to finish the fight. All right. All right. Anyway, you can find us on sermonaudio.com slash Pastor Cooley for OPBBC. OPBBC. I said that like kind of stuttering, but that's okay. Uh, anyway, you can find all of our sermons here. And Northfield, Minnesota, Old Paz Baptist Church. Also listen to the Christian Soldier's True Source of Confidence. All right. So you can see that, and you can find our stuff there. Teresa, I'd be careful about Young Living stuff. Go watch my video on love, young, young Living. I'm not against essential oils. I am against Young Living. But you check that out. That's a, that's a personal decision that you have to make. But i take a look at that video about Young Living. Uh, that I did. I've got a lot of evidence that, that shows that they're a bunch of witches. But essential oil is not evil. Okay? I'm not saying that. Just take a look at it and, and um, you know, think about that. Okay. Also, if you want to give to our ministry, you can go to our sermon audio page, click on give. There's the PayPal button right there. You can give PayPal. You can send that to salvationpreacher at gmail.com or Pastor Cooley at iCloud.com. Um, and you could send it to either one of those. But CBD rubbed CBD oil is good for you. It has some very good properties to it, and it's very helpful for anxiety and for a number of different things. And there's nothing wrong with it. But uh, anyway, uh, I would look into my video that I did on that. I, you know, so anyway. But there's plenty of other good companies out there that have essential oil uh, that you can get it from. And I don't sell any, so I'm not trying to sell you anything i'm just giving you the info okay um otherwise you can mail us something also um here to pastor jason cooley 1030 south highway wow that just flipped that was weird oh that's the address hey look there we are i wonder if i'm in there 
Look, I must not have been there. My car's not there. When did they take that picture? Wow. Maybe I was parked around back. Or maybe I'm over here. It's weird. I don't see me anywhere. Anyway. Here we are. Hey, look, there's the road in front. Hey, this is pretty cool. Hey, there's O'Reilly. Anyway. So. You could definitely mail it or give any way the Lord leads you to. All right. And uh, pray for us. We could use the prayers. Okay. All right. God bless you all. Take care. And I got to get to work. Got to do some study on Baptist history today and tomorrow to prepare for that. Glad somebody said they were blessed by the Baptist history teachings. That's wonderful. I got more to put on. Uh, I just did one on Constantine last week, and I got to go through that video, check it out, and get it put online. Um. I'll try to get a bunch of stuff put online here. Uh, but anyway, all right. Well, God bless you all. Take care. And we will see you, Lord willing, Monday. All right. Take care, everybody.